Namaskar, welcome to Insight Tonight with Ashok Vyas and today we are discussing something which is uh, catching attention of the whole world. We have not seen this kind of tension escalating between Russia and America for a long time and what has resulted in all Western countries uh, joining hands uh, to put sanctions against Russia relates to Russia-Ukraine crisis. What is this crisis we will understand in today's show and where it is likely to lead, uh, what kind of actions ex are expected from America and what is the stand that India should have taken and have taken already, uh, we will discuss that also. And um, before I go further, I quickly want to take this opportunity of welcoming my guest today. Uh, joining uh, Dr. Rakesh Sharma ji and Bimal Goyaji. Namaste. Welcome. Namaste. So, um, before I request uh, Dr. Sharma to set the tone of uh, the scene as it stands right now, uh, very briefly, for those of you who are following this news from a distance, may I mention that uh, Russia has recognized two parts of Ukraine, Eastern Ukraine, which is Luhansk and Donetsk region. Uh, and in their support, uh, the deployment of Russian forces is uh, perceived as invasion by Russia and uh, rightly so. So where we are and why this situation, uh, Dr. Sharma, uh, give us some brief. Sure. Uh, in two minutes, I'll just give a little history. As we know, Ukraine has been uh, inhabited by humans for a long, long time, like any other country, uh, perhaps as old as India. And uh, it was part of different empires until 18th century, when it was taken over half by Poland and half by Russia. Then sometime after World War I, it regained uh, its uh, name as Ukraine, but it was taken over by USSR in 19, I think, 91, when USSR broke down, Ukraine became an independent country. And since then, Ukraine has been an independent country, and it's a democratic country with prime minister and elected president. And during World War II, it was called a breadbasket of USSR because Ukraine has very fertile land and it exports grains uh, and uh, so many other things uh, in agriculture. It's a beautifully agricultural country and not only that, it has a lot of minerals like titanium, manganese, mercury. Uh, so it's economically it's an important country besides being the second largest country in Europe and the current conflict that started sometime a year ago is what Russia claims is Ukraine is trying to join NATO and that's why they have their forces on the Russian Ukrainian border and America says that this is just an excuse that Ukraine is being invaded by Russia on the excuse that it may join NATO and there is no such thing. That Putin is trying to uh, regain other countries that they lost during USSR breakup and he wants to expand his em empire or uh, Russian empire and that's where the conflict is. So I'll come back to you and uh, Vimalji as uh, we heard the beautiful description of the historical backdrop as well as uh, how fertile and beautiful uh, this land is. We uh, in general want the world to live in peace and that uh, almost is shattered by certain developments. In this case, uh, as you perceive and as uh, Dr. mentioned about uh, Russia objecting to or ra rather uh, having some apprehensions about Ukraine joining NATO. There is a report that it already joined uh, Dr. Saab, in uh, 2020 and uh, probably 12th June 2020 Ukraine uh, became part of NATO. But there is uh, a treaty between NATO nations and 
how it is playing out so vimal ji what is your uh, take why this escalation of uh, tension between russia and ukraine has uh, taken now uh, so i repeat as per the reports uh, it is already it has already become a member of nato well okay uh, the conflict if you look at the history roots back to the negotiation between gorbachev and bush when the ussr uh, became kind of democratic we call it and and it led east germany uh, go away became democratic and everything else at that time there was understanding between russia and and uh, eastern bloc that they will not expand nato now there was no promise no one made any promises but it was kind of understanding that nato will not expand and that was the biggest fear that that russia had that by expanding nato these countries will become closer and closer to russia and they will have more influence and that's where the whole conflict starts from and this is the fear that russia has and now us you using a, an excuse that it's a democratic country and you can't go in the point is think about it if i mean us uh, you, russia already has an influence in cuba let's say you went to mexico or another country how would us feel so this is where the whole conflict is and now we are playing a game here because russia is trying to uh, influence the countries around it even though it broke up and on on the other hand us is, and europeans are trying to influence all these countries and joining them in nato now think about it czech republic became nato country slovakia became nato country uh poland romania estonia all of these it's a long list of countries that were joined by nato now it this is really threatening to russia that all these now you you have ukraine going the same way and that's what is causing a lot of conflict yeah. so we will you appreciate that and uh, just uh, recollecting with you that it was only 24th august 1991 that ukraine declared itself as independent country and uh, invasion of russia at uh, that time to ukraine resulted into nato nations deciding to oust or to not continue to cooperate with uh, russia i yes. think it was 2014 uh, so dr sharma tell me about the basic premises with which nato countries are operating and uh, after 2014 uh, what kind of relationships uh, relationship uh, has been shared between nato and uh, russia see the problem is that nato was formed to counter ussr and as we all know there is no more ussr all the countries that broke up from ussr have been joined nato so nato actually has expanded to twice its size in the last 20 years now ukraine being a neighbor of uh, russia uh, if if uh, tomorrow nato countries claim that they want to put their forces in ukraine because it's part of nato or they put missiles in ukraine then russia definitely will have a problem because it is there on their uh, or in their backyard so what has happened here is like we all know in 1962 when there was a cuban missile crisis and those crises or missiles happened because khrushchev sent missiles to cuba which is in the back backyard of united states and president kennedy didn't like it and there was going to be world war 3 same way russia doesn't want any influence of nato countries in ukraine which is next door to russia i think it's but natural and uh, nato countries should have realized it and they do but they somehow are trying to pressurize russia into accepting the fact that if ukraine is a nato country or if nato forces go in there accept it what uh, nato countries and usa do not realize is that russia is also second superpower if not as strong as it used to be but still 
it's a it's a country that you just cannot ignore and i think they should have respected that and should have left ukraine alone out of nato and out of the influence of uh, nato countries but they didn't and russia is objecting to it and i can definitely understand the russian point and i don't think russia is trying to expand or go back to its glory days i doubt it that they will invade other countries and i don't think they have any um, uh, real intention of occupying ukraine forever because these days no country can be occupied by another country uh, because the population or citizens of that country will revolt against you it's a big headache so america is not playing its cards very well so let me let i'll come back to you and understand your point a little bit more but just bringing in bimal ji uh, with uh, the reference uh, while russia is claiming that it has deployed its forces to maintain peace which of course uh, is not the way as is perceived by western forces as well as america why do you think uh, russia needed uh, to take uh, this step uh, at this juncture and is there any recent uh, triggering uh, point which has caused uh, this uh, situation making yes. it volatile yeah the, the important thing is that we need to understand russians are losing if you think about it they're losing everywhere have you seen any part in your car made in russia have you seen anything in your house made in russia they don't produce, they don't produce anything they don't have factories all they have is oil and gas and that's the biggest product they have and that's that's how they get foreign currency and that's what they export to europe now europeans are very afraid germany is afraid that they will shut down the pipeline they will shut down the gas now you will not have any heating gas in in germany or part of other european countries but russians are very afraid they're losing the game they have a problem that nato countries are expanding and they are going into their territory and that's the biggest issue they have now pro russians there are some pro russians in ukraine obviously two uh, areas that russians acquired recently because that's why we imposed all the sanctions pro russians are rising against the revolution quickly followed a couple of major cities in eastern U ukraine because they're all europe pro russians they're from russia side now the ukraine government is so corrupt that they have no money they they mishandled all the money they had they have no army if you think about it very little army the arms are going from other european countries and this is causing a lot of problems so now the russians have moved in to support the rebels in eastern ukraine and see this is where whole conflict is and now they have amassed all these troops around ukraine and and they're playing a game we will invade that's what they're trying to do so uh, bimal ji and uh, dr rakesh initially and uh, i think uh, recently russia uh, maintained that it is not uh, going to invade uh, ukraine and uh, what they are doing is uh, just uh, exercise of uh, their forces and which of course is not true uh, to the tune of 150000 uh, uh, armed uh, personnel uh, being deployed at the border of ukraine and uh, as per reports uh, the army strength of ukraine in terms of numbers is 250000 so 150000 becomes quite uh, a huge uh, large number to be at that spot uh, creating a sense of disruption and disturbance in addition to this uh, for weeks or maybe months russia has constantly bombarded ukrainians with uh, cyber attacks so they were getting messages uh, that this uh, school is going to be bombed or uh, that post office will be bombed etc so people uh, were made to live in a constant sense of fear through cyber war for quite some time to which uh, they uh, bravely faced but there is another uh, statement that i bring to your attention dr rakesh sharma by putin who claims that 
यूक्रेन हैज बिकम पपेट ऑफ वेस्टर्न फोर्सेस नाउ दैट अगेन ट्रेसेज इट्स रूट इन द फॉल बिटवीन नेटो फोर्सेज एंड रशिया बट अगेन इफ जस्ट फॉर एज एज अ कॉमन मैन इफ आई से even if ukraine has become puppet of western forces and it being being an independent sovereign nation how should it affect putin or russia and why should the, they take such aggressive action your take on this uh, dr sharma so i want to make it very clear i am not in favor of war i am not in favor of any country invading its neighbors and that's number one make it want to make it very clear but we all understand what international politics is and i think what's happening here is as ukraine has joined nato and russia is afraid of that russia is putting pressure on ukraine as well as nato countries mainly united states to come to terms with some kind of concession that russia wants so putting forces at ukrainian border mean say listen i'm going to invade or cause harm to this country unless we agree to some yes. kind of terms and that's what it is and usa understands it very well ukraine does it too i don't think putin is going to occupy entire ukraine if it does for a month or two or six maybe uh, but russia really cannot contr- control a uh, ukraine for long time and yes russia does have 3 million russians in ukraine uh so they can use some kind of excuse but in the end uh they don't want ukraine to fall in the hands of uh, western countries so they want some concessions a uh, promise uh and that's what it is this is a very uh, it's a tactful game everybody understands that and ukraine is in the middle uh they perhaps then choose the sides very carefully they should have been little neutral for time to come and now let's move towards uh, the responsibility so to say of america and uh, western uh, countries uh, nato uh, nations uh, in order to uh, support ukraine uh, the kind of section sanctions which are imposed by america are likely to result into uh, significant uh, financial pressure on russia not only russia as a nation but elites of russia there are also going to uh, feel the pinch of these sanctions uh, your take on uh, this step by biden administration uh, bimal ji okay yeah see it, we know the history of of sanctions what happens with sanctions we have done it against iran we have done it against so many countries it's very difficult to assess what the damage really is iran has sanctions but it goes around and sells oil to india and other countries and i don't know how it works but it does and apparently they they bypass it in this case i'll tell you the russians are very smart as soon as any of the good sanctions are imposed against russia they will put their own dump sanctions and you know what the dump sanctions are they don't work but they will still put them and their sanctions are like food imports from russian uh, western europe they will they will stop that they will say no more food coming from uh, western europe and then all kinds of sanctions they will install but what what's going to happen is it's going to help their own agriculture industry they will for example the cheese will stop coming from europe that that will help their own production even though the cheese produced in russia is a bad quality and it's not really liked by russians but they don't have a choice over time the economy will adapt and they will be able to work with them now the biggest biggest fear of sanction is actually on europeans and americans because this is where the sanctions will really make a major impact russians can get used to it and they will be fine now one of the things i tell you one of the sanctions that america can put is called swift system which is the banking system it's american it's a private company but it's an american company we can stop them from doing business in us uh, in russia but 
they will not do it. The reason is, once you stop Russia, Russia has other ways to do, go to China or go to other countries. And that will stop all this, these transactions that America does with a lot of other countries. And that will hurt America. So these sanctions, they have to be done very carefully. And even though the sanctions are imposed, I think the impact will be very little. It will hurt U.S. economy and European economy more than Russians. Vimalji, what you said is echoed by Republicans. And they have said, uh, Dr. Rakesh ji, that uh, Biden administration's uh, decision and steps that are being taken are not enough. Uh, to counter the threat faced by Ukraine. Uh, in addition to uh, financial sanctions, the U.S., uh, as I mentioned probably earlier too, is continuing to support uh, with defense equipments to Ukraine. Uh, what else do you see uh, is likely to uh, come uh, from America to deal with this crisis situation, uh, Dr. Sharma? Yeah. My take is very different from what uh, American think tank people have been thinking. I think from this conflict, the biggest gainer is China. There are two things that I want to bring to uh, the attention of your viewers. Number one, if you look around for the last few months, all the attention from COVID as well as China has been shifted towards ukraine russian conflict so china is smart enough to take itself out of the picture number two china to me looks like is going to be the biggest gainer if somehow russia invades ukraine that gives a green signal a green light to china that hey listen if russia can do that maybe in a couple of years china can also invade taiwan and take it over so I am not surprised that China may have joined hands with Russia and Putin. Hey, listen, I will be on your side. Why don't you do whatever you want to do? This way, China will be on the side of Russia and USA and Europe will be alone. And then tomorrow, Russia can help China if China decides to invade Taiwan. <clears throat> and I'm just shocked that most of the <clears throat> American thinkers have not put any uh, light on this thing. And number two, when it comes to, like Mr. Goyal said, when it comes to uh, sanctions, these big countries really do not lose much when you put sanctions. Why didn't we put sanction against China? China destroyed the economy of the rest of the world with COVID-19 uh, virus. We didn't do anything to China. so. USA and Europeans know very well they are dependent on China. <coughs> Sorry. Same way, uh, Russia is not a tiny country that it will be hurt. I just want to mention one more thing. If you look until 20th century, the only export Russia ever had was vodka and diamonds. They had <laughs> nothing else until 20th century. Only when the oil came out in the last 30, 40 years, uh, Russia has been selling oil and gas. It never was an export uh, kind of nation. And uh, so what are you trying to tell them that we will put sanction and do what? India will buy all the oil from Russia and some of the other countries will do. China will be the biggest recipient of Russian oil and gas. So I don't know how they can uh, damage Russian economy. And uh, <clears throat> Russia only ex export it has is defense equipment, gas, and, and, and oil. And <laughs> 100 years ago, they only had vodka and diamonds. So <laughs> that's, that's very interesting. Uh, Dr. Sharma, now looking at this scenario from the point of view of India, and India has uh, made its position uh, by uh, declaring that <coughs> the priority is to de-escalate the crisis between Russia and Ukraine. And what observers are saying that India has not categorically uh, uh, condemned or criticized Russia for its uh, aggressive stand uh, in this situation. 
विमल जी वॉट डू यू मेक आउट ऑफ इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ इंडियाज फॉरन पॉलिसी एंड वाई इंडिया इज नॉट स्पीकिंग एज अ कोरस विद नेटो एंड अमेरिका is okay see the problem with india is in a difficult situation on one hand you have russian who are french for so many years 40 50 60 years since independent and russians were always on india side and in un or any other place russians took uh, india side now on the other hand we have new friends in western countries so this west became new friend what do we do how do we control how do we balance the two that's the most difficult thing for a politician and that's why it took so long for india to react on this thing now think about it india likes russia seeking eastern europe influence the reason is because india wants to preserve its influence in south asia now take a parallel between crimea and and kashmir when the russians went into crimea pakistanis started screaming oh now they should have a referendum in kashmir as well so that became very difficult now the oil prices will go up if there are sanctions and that will make very difficult for modi government because the elections are coming and that's another problem and then you have sanctions 60% of military parts are coming from russia to india and then you have s400 air defense missiles coming from russia if if us starts sanctioning we will have a difficult time getting all these things from russia so, so and will, that's where the the yeah. whole problem of uh, foreign policy lies with so, india yeah we will be very well said and uh, india is also looking at 20000 uh, indian citizens who either study or work or have something to do in ukraine and so they are uh, based there uh, so dr sharma is india's concern guided by safely evacuating its citizens uh, that has uh, resulted into this uh, comparatively softer stand i mean i seriously doubt that conflict will reach that stage where every civilian is going to be endangered i, but, I don't but think that's what we are going to see evacuation has already started yeah no i don't think you are going to see big cities being bombed this is not world war 2 that you are just going to bomb all the cities like we saw during world war 2 it doesn't happen that way anymore uh, because the world is watching very closely so I, i don't think india is going to evacuate its citizens doesn't i, no, I don't it, think so it is doing uh, it is doing yeah so number 2 um, yes india is in the middle of this conflict indirectly uh, but they have to play smart game just like if you look at a lot of islamic countries they all are uh, quiet sometimes uh, by not saying anything you do a lot of stuff so india should keep itself mum not take anybody side because so uh, yeah just we because both the countries i appreciate that just since we have a minute to go uh, quick uh, concluding remarks from both of you and looking at the whole scenario from the point of view of india in terms of india's uh, relationship with america uh, india is india's uh, neutral or softly pro russia stand by uh, not taking any stand with america and uh, nato will it result into some reshaping of uh, india's relationship with america vimal ji very briefly okay the thing is that you have to think about it we we have two two partners here eastern and western now if you take a side of one under pressure from the other what if it resolves tomorrow there is all the whole thing between the two now where would us be where where is india going to stand so that's where we I, are torn i hear you and uh, dr rakesh you are happy with the india's uh, stand on this situation at the point i i don't think the problem or the conflict is between russia and us so india has nothing to worry about us if it likes russia it doesn't have to say it loudly but just keep quiet so i think uh, where we are is uh, we got uh, a fair idea from both uh, our panelists uh, about uh, the genesis of uh, russia ukraine crisis uh, let us uh, hope uh, things uh, de escalate and get resolved thank you very much uh, dr rakesh sharma ji and uh, vimal ji for joining thank us you. and thanks sure. to all thank of you. you for being a part of this conversation this is a show guest namaste